Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Whew. Man, I am nervous, Dan. I never get this nervous with guests. I've interviewed a lot of people. Bobby Knight, yeah. icon, legend. I've never got to sit down with Michael Jordan. I've never got to sit down with Babe Ruth. Well, but that's today, because he died like 60 years before you were born. True, but I could exhume his body and have a full conversation with him, if need be, is what I'm saying. Today, we sit down with arguably the greatest hero in all of sports mm-hmm. currently today. Joey Chestnut is here. How are you? Welcome to Drinking Bros. Doing good. Great to be on with you guys. Yeah. Happy we were able to make it work out. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, look, you don't know this. This is dead serious. In my household, we watch you every 4th of July. We are in all chestnut household all day all night my kid screams out chestnut and then we we actually go live every fourth of july Mm -hmm. and do a reaction show as you guys are live in the hot dog eating contest that's awesome i do it i uh i I love it it's it's, i love hearing it and it's like weird and it's part of like the encouragement and support of uh helping me like stay motivated well look for for me personally um Kobe Bryant was my favorite athlete. I'm wearing a Kobe Bryant shirt today. When he passed away, you took the torch uh, and ran with it. Um, A lot of people say LeBron is great or he's the greatest in the world right now. It's Joey Chestnut. And if you're telling yourself otherwise, you're kidding yourself. Well, a lot of people say that Michael Jordan is the Joey Chestnut of basketball. Yes. Right? Yeah, you've heard that, right? I've heard that. uh, (laughs) You guys know I'm just a normal dude. I, I... I went to school, got an engineering degree, and while I was in school, I started doing these contests, and I, I got lucky. And so, that's all. It, it's uh, <clears throat> I got lucky. I, I found something that, like, my body was literally made for. And uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Before we uh, we were working out some audio issues right before the show started, and you, I, it looked like you were stretching your face and mouth out a little bit. Is yes. that part of your routine? Oh, man, yeah, my jaws. I've been working out my jaws like crazy that right now. So. They get tight. You don't use uh, those no. things like that rubber ball thing that you that you bite on. Do you use that shit? I think that, yeah, I have, I have a couple of different one things. I have the jaws of size. <laughs> yeah, which jaws of size. Like, yeah, and uh, <laughs> then I have another thing where it's these molds, and uh, it's like a rope hanging out, and I and I attach to a, a, a huge water bottle to it. You're I, kidding. I feel like if you walked around in public as a normal person doing that, everybody would call the cops. But if it's the oh, that's Joey. It's Joey. Yeah. he's What's working crazy, out his jaws. Yeah, I can I can walk around with the rubber ball in, and nobody knows it because I have the, the mask, face mask in. Oh yeah, it's true. Oh, that's yeah, right. COVID. Thanks, I China. I ended up drooling a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so when we were texting back and forth, one of our our sponsors here is MyBookie.com that sponsors our show. Promo code Drinking Bros will get you 150 percent of your deposit back. I I texted you my betting slip. I've gone all in. The max bet on you is a hundred dollars for Saturday's. Uh, competition. The over under is seventy one and a half dogs. I'll repeat 70, that. It, it, that, that. That that's a good one. Uh, I've seen other people with the over and under at, at seventy two and a half. Um, yeah. The truth is, this is going to be a weird contest. There's going to be no crowd pushing me, and uh, there's going to be. It's just going to be like I think four eaters now. It, w- it was going to be six, and two of the eaters just had to pull out because of uh, New York City's quarantine rules. Mm. Man. And, uh, so, so it, it's going to be a very limited field, but it's all the, all the top eaters are still there, and uh, and it's going to be there's going to be more cameras in the room than than eaters and audience. So, I'm a, my, my biggest worry is like some of the cameramen or the reporters in there are, are going to make weird noises like like gasps or like like uh, have these shocking noise sure. sounds that uh. You- Usually, I'm just hearing cheering and yelling, and if if it, if it if I'm I'm a little bit weary worried about the the quietness, and uh, I'm hoping it, it, it's uh, uh yeah, I, I, the whole thing's gonna be weird. I, 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 but I, I know I can break 72, 75. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just a matter of just finding my rhythm. One would argue that because there's only four people in a room, you're not outside. Uh, you don't have the heat beating down on you the entire day. The dogs will be fresher and the buns will be fresher. Won't that allow you to push down and beat that record and go for the 75? There, there are definitely some variables that, uh, that, that, that could be favorable to, to eating more hot dogs. I, uh, yeah, it, it's, 
the dog they're, they're making less hot dogs because there's less eaters mm. so the, every one of them should be absolutely done and perfect cooked cooked perfectly no, no undercooked dogs that are going to be rubbery uh and but and what else inside it, it, i'm not going to be sweating like an absolute madman <laughs> i'm a little bit worried about being too cold if, it, if it's cold then it's hard to get amped up if it's also cold then the hot dogs will will uh Will will cool down more and, and end up being a little bit rubbery. You, nobody wants to eat cold hot dogs. Um, but uh, if, and and then the, the quiet room. I'm 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 a little I'm a little bit. It, it, it's just it's unnatural to uh, eat when in a quiet room. Usually, if I'm practicing, it, it's loud music playing and somebody yelling at me. Uh, and, yeah. And Fourth of July, I'm I'm used to having the audience push me. So they're they're they're. I'm not going in there thinking it's going to be easy. There, there is a chance it, uh, uh, the scenario is going to be perfect for a world record, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I just need to, no, no matter what, I need to go out there hungry and just try to find that rhythm, L- a, a rhythm where I'm just moving the food down. Yeah, and literally hungry on this one, but um, uh, I don't know if you've watched the UFC because the UFC is back, and a lot of the fighters say they can hear the announcers. The guy you're talking about, George O'Shea, is hilarious. George, yeah, he's he's. I, I feel like you should if you. How, how many of these have you won now? Twelve, right? Yeah, I've won twelve, and George is amazing. He the things that come out of his mouth. Uh, sometimes they're funny, mm. and they're they're a little bit lighthearted. But usually it, it's it's like he he tries to build people up, like, and he makes me believe that all right, I I could I could eat eat a tank if it was if it was driving in front of me right now. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could do whatever I need to do, and. Uh, and even when I feel like I'm slowing down, he's telling me I, I can dig deeper. So uh, I, I'm really hoping he brings out his A game and pushes me. Uh, I know it, it's going to be it's going to be different. There's no audience. It's going to be different, not just for eaters, but it, for the people watching at home. Uh, it, it's going to it's going to look different. Uh, usually they they can pan out the camera out, and you'll you can see 20 eaters and, and an audience. This one there's going to be four, maybe six eaters, and. Uh, so it's going to be a lot more close-ups. It's not going to be as pretty. Uh, not that I'm ever pretty, but uh, it's going to be. People are going to see see how hard I'm working. I think maybe there's, a little bit more. Yeah, there's not much of an aesthetic to a hot dog eating contest. Really. No, no. Although I feel no, like no. Uh, George Shea's hat is is the thing that brings everything together. I and it, after 12 wins, you should probably get his hat. I feel like. Yeah, that carnival barker. Yeah, hat, he right? you got to like he should have surrendered that to you years ago. Oh, I, he can keep that. I think it's sweat. He, <laughs> oh, it's, uh, well, hopefully he's not wearing the same one every year, right? No, he he's 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 a uh, what, what is that superstitious? Cool, superstitious, yeah. Oh my god, and, and he had to get it repaired. I think. Like, how do you even clean one of those? That's a question. No, you got to use a power washer, I, I believe, on something mm. like that. Uh, I want to go over some of your records because a, a lot of you just know you. A lot of people just know you as a hot dog eating champion, when actually you're much more. Uh, so hot dogs. Oh, uh, you, said. yeah, you own exactly. Goddamn right, that's what she said. Um, hot dogs. The record is seventy three and a half. You own that record. Uh, apple pie. Um, you own the record of eating four point three seven five three pound pieces, which is insane. To yeah, me. or a pie. It ended up being like thirteen pounds. I don't know why they they have that weird number in there. The, six. It's, it's the equivalent to eating forty four Big Macs, Dan. Six, is what it is. Six pounds of funnel cake in 10 minutes. Six pounds of funnel cake in 10 minutes. <laughs> Deep fried asparagus. You own the record at eating 12 pounds, oh nine my. ounces worth of deep yeah, fried that was asparagus. Delicious. Oh, it, it was, it was par- topped with Parmesan cheese. And then uh, it was just, it was amazing. And then, then my and then I had up the bathroom. That was when I was still working in construction. And, oh, uh, yeah. I'm I, sure everybody was a big fan of you. I in the office and knew I was like, oh, my God, Joey's an animal. <laughs> Uh, burritos, you own the record, 14.5 pounds eaten in 10 minutes. Yeah, that was a, what is it, green chili burritos in, in New Mexico. And, uh, oh, oh my God. It's those were... 141 hard-boiled eggs in eight minutes. 141 <laughs> hard-boiled eggs in, in eight minutes. What does your toilet look like the next day after one of these competitions? Well, it's, uh... It's it, it, things come out in rounds. It's not like <laughs> everything's gonna come out. I, I, that would be too graphic, but it, it's uh, it, it's the funniest when there's like a really beautiful reporter and she asks me what happens afterwards. And I, but uh, no, it, it, it going into every contest, I I, uh, I fast for about two days, no almost no solid food, so I, I'm absolutely empty, 
And so I'm, I'm, my body's craving some nutrition, a good amount of nutrition, but it, it's, it's also going to go through me quick. And so it's, um, it, it's going to come in rounds. Uh, are you rocking a bidet at home or whatever? I feel like if it, as many shits as you take after a competition like that, if you were wiping casual style, you would rub your butthole completely off your body. You so. got to go bidet. Everybody should have a bio bidet. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It, it's the way to go. Same. <laughs> it, I, I, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just efficient. It is. I, I walk around feeling like my asshole just had a shower all day. Yeah, Dan loves it. Sometimes, even without taking a shit, I'll just go in there and have fun. Yeah, just have a nice little splash. Yeah. It, sometimes like, it pushes so hard, it, it, it's almost like, yeah, it, it's like, whoa. <laughs> you yeah. Know. You should go to Lamaze <laughs> classes probably at some point, right? It's, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's, a, it's a position I'm in probably a little bit more than most people. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I want to keep going through these records here. Chicken wings. You own that record. 182 wings in 30 minutes. Um, that is the equivalent to seven pounds of cheddar cheese eaten. Um, um, yeah. Where was that? Were the, were the wings hot? I don't. I don't. Actually, I've broken that record a couple times in Buffalo. I think I did 220 something wings. And Buffalo wings, they, they they actually do a really good job. They have a festival, and Buffalo is a great city to party in. So they take their uh, they take their wings serious, and it's, it's just a that that's I think those ones are they're usually medium. They're they're kind of spicy, but uh, even even medium at the end of a twelve minute contest, it adds up. God yeah. damn! Now this I've I've been in one actually. One what? I've been in a wing eating contest before. The winner got uh, Tyler Anderson was his name. He was on a, my on a, my football team. He ate one hundred and twenty four, and I thought that was a lot. You've you almost doubled him at this point. I had 74 in that competition. There's no way I would eat that much. Yeah. Not bad, right? 74? It was in high bad. school. I'm more impressed with the 25 and a half ice cream sandwiches in six minutes. <sighs> yeah, that was, it was on paper. I mean, it looks impressive, but it was really painful. Yeah, pain, it was like Because it's cold. It was, the ice cream, I was just thinking about it. It, it, like, hurts my chest a little bit. And <laughs> No, it, it, it's it, – I, I was squeezing the sandwiches so hard. That uh, I ended up having frostbite on my hand, like I had blisters <laughs> from the ice. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> fucking Joey Chestnut's That's got dedication. PTSD. That's dedication. That's what a fucking warrior does. You know, dude. if you've got PTSD from ice cream sandwiches, you've lived a good life. Yeah, you have. I mean, that's... I got my priorities straight. <laughs> <laughs> donuts. You own the donut record: fifty-five glazed donuts in ten minutes. Yeah, there were these big ones in LA. I forget what they, 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 they were. They're big bastard donuts. Oh, were you at Randy's um, with the the huge? Yeah, Randy's donuts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Randy's numerous times. When you, whenever you yeah. fly into LA, it's right next to the airport. Yeah, every everybody thinks, oh, a glazed donuts. They, they think they think like a uh, Krispy Kreme or something or yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. You know, these these were these were monsters. Uh, so they're like, oh, you only did forty something of those. I was like, dude, it, it, they were they were they were huge. Yeah, they were huge. Uh, now this next one is is. I think the most impressive one to me, Dan, mm -hmm. this is gumbo eaten. You ate 1.875 gallons of <laughs> gumbo. No, I'm so close to two gallons. Ugh. <laughs> and it was like we were, it was this uh, weird LSU tailgate party, and it was like way down in like way, way past like farther south than New Orleans. We were down in like Bayou country where people were mumbling. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, oh, like, oh, like, they sound like Coach Orgeron. Yeah, they sound basically. like uh, yeah. Coach Orgeron. Yeah. Boom. And uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a good time, man. Everybody every was super happy and nice. And, uh, it, but it, it, was a, it, was, it, it, was, it was a crazy, crazy experience. Um, hamburgers. Uh, 103 Crystal Burgers. I've actually attempted this as well. I, ate, I was able to eat 22. That was all. I topped out at 22 Crystal Burgers. It was, was that 22 in eight minutes? Or, uh, ten, it was about ten, yeah. So I, I, I like. I thought it was decent, but um, again, it was a college thing. Yeah, it, it's uh, Crystal Burgers. Once you get the rhythm, you can you can just they fly down, and and once it, once your body knows how to metabolize them, it, it's, it's dude. It, yeah, that, that one's trouble. That that one. I, if, if I lived close to a Crystal Burgers or, or even White Castle, it would. Uh, I'd, I'd probably gain thirty pounds easily. Okay. I love those goddamn things. Uh, the next one's a weird one: shrimp wontons. The record is, that you own is three hundred ninety wontons. Um, what yeah. what was the significance of that? Why why did somebody want to have an eat off with shrimp wontons? You there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Three. So I was in Thailand. I was in Bangkok. Thailand eating uh, the, the shrimp wonton and uh 
they're these little they're little shrimp, but they 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 go down easy. It took me a little little while to find a rhythm, but uh, it was that was an insane contest, and, and uh, I, I I felt like garbage afterwards. And but and then it just goes with the uh, goes with the job. What does one get for winning the shrimp wonton contest? Like, how much money do you get for something like that? That one, oh, it, it was so. It was this Chinese company or a Chinese company at CP Foods, mm-hmm. uh, and they're big throughout all Asia. So I think that one, I think it ended up converting like twelve thousand dollars. It, it, it was it was a good prize, and they. Shit. they I, mean, huh? I, I was going against the top eaters in the world. Uh, I, like my last time going against Kobayashi, they, that that company was a, was a sponsor. We, uh, I was eating the shrimp wonton in Singapore, and I beat wow. Kobayashi there. Wow. Uh, we'll get to Kobayashi after we get to these records because there's a couple on them here that are that are Dan and I's personal favorites. The first one is Taco Bell Tacos. You ate a record 53 beef soft tacos. Um, I'm a gigantic Taco Bell fan. I understand this fully. Uh, you ate these in 10 minutes. Um, I could gas through 12 or 16 of those things. Yeah, Taco Bell, it, it's it's like it's the most underrated uh, food there is. I mean, it, it's it's some good things on that menu. Goddamn and, uh, right. Yes. Yeah, there's a there actually I know somebody that used to be in a um senior management position at Taco Bell PepsiCo back in the day and he said they actively attempted to disguise the fact that it is one of the most if not the most healthy fast foods that exist because they thought it was bad for the brand to seem healthy because all the ingredients like the the carb count is pretty low. It's like fat and and real meat, real protein most yeah, yeah, of it yeah. is. So they were like, well, so some company, I don't remember who it was, but they did a test of all the biggest fast food chains and found that Taco Bell had the healthiest menu, mm-hmm. and they tried, they actively tried to suppress that information. Really? Yeah. Really? Because they don't, why, why would you, if you're Taco Bell, no, you want drunk fucking sorority girls at 2 a.m. That's your fucking business. That's true. You're not, That's taking, true. You're not taking the family out for a healthy dinner. Yeah, you, you want people drinking those Baja Blasts and, mm-hmm. uh, and get a number four with a nachos bel grande on the side. Oh, you gotta get those ch- the chalupas. Oof. Uh, Chalupa's man. good. I like the Mexican pizza, but they changed something in the sauce now, and it, it doesn't did. taste it doesn't good taste anymore. The same, you're right. Yeah, you're I'm right. gonna. I might burn down a Taco you know, Bell. The Doritos Los Taco idea, the uh, the Doritos ta- uh, hard shells. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're genius. Yeah, it worked amazing. Yeah, yeah. I look, whoever's running Taco Bell's whole outfit is a genius. When they combine with KFC at certain stores around the nation, uh, I wept. Um, and then I ate a lot, but uh, mm. I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, the next record you own is actually Dan's favorite, and I and I hadn't had this until I was with Dan. You own the record for eating poutine uh, at 25.5 pounds. No, it's 28 pounds. 28 pounds in 10 minutes. Yep. Yeah, so I, I went through 28 pounds. Some of the gravy probably hit, didn't hit get get digested. It would hit the ground or it stayed in the cup, but uh, it, it was definitely like 26 pounds of of substance uh and it was, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was so much food like afterwards it was like I, I was i was hit by like a tranquilizer I, everything was like in slow motion and any any kind of questions that i had to answer any interviews i did it was just didn't make any sense this is canadian I, I was, poutine I which, it's, drugs. It, yeah that's yeah. crazy the canadian poutine uses uh turkey gravy which means there's tryptophan in it which is probably why you were about to pass out after eating it like that's a massive dose it was yeah, and I was just so bloated. Oh, it was it was it was it was a weird. It was a, like I like there are times where I'm bloated and I'm like uncomfortable, but I was just so bloated and I, I was I was happy, but it was just weird. Eating twenty five pounds or twenty eight pounds of anything though, you're gonna feel bloated and weird. That's yeah. just me. That's just me. Um, I want to talk about Kobayashi. Dan and I uh, watched the. It, 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 I want to say thirty for thirty uh, doc between yeah. you and Kobayashi, uh, which was fantastic, by the way. I didn't realize what a weird guy he was um, in real Very life. Emotional. Yeah. He's a, uh, he's, he's an emo- Yeah. I, I don't understand him. Uh, he thinks he's, I mean, it, it, I know what I do. It's, it's competitive eating. It's weird. It, and I'm lucky. I, it's my job. Uh, and he thinks he's an artist or something. And um, I, I, I miss competing against him. He, he was the reason why I, I pushed myself so hard. And uh, in the beginning, at least. And but he, he, you know, there's in every field, whether whether it's Antonio Brown or or whether you're you're gonna get some great people who have amazing talent, but they're just kind of weird. And uh, Kobayashi is just kind of weird. Yeah, he's one of those eccentric guys. And after watching the doc, um, 
because I always thought there was some form of controversy. That, you know, he used to play it up every year where he would, you know, he came to the event one time uh, and he got arrested, I believe. 2010, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it was one of those things to me where after watching that doc, I just thought, here's a guy who's lost. He knows he can't beat you anymore. And it was kind of the, the end of his career, if you will. And it's just, it seemed kind of sad. Uh, on his end at the end of it. But you're just that dominant. And, you know, look, you're a once-in-a-generation athlete. Uh, is that the way you felt about it, looking back at it? Well, I, uh, yeah, well, I, I didn't want, I, I, I don't want to say it, but every time he, uh, every time he loses, he has a, he has an excuse. And he tries to downplay it and downplay the loss, uh, which is all right. But if, if, if I lose, I'm going to come back stronger and hungrier and, and uh, if I lose twice in a row, that, you, there, there's something wrong. Uh, you have to admit it. And yeah. uh, he and he, he he he's an awesome eater. And and the truth is, he could probably beat me in in, in a lot of foods. But on the Fourth of July in hot dogs, I'm gonna put the put the work in. Put the it, it's a food I'm super comfortable with, and I'm I'm gonna use my capacity. And uh, and I think he knew that he he uh, wasn't gonna cut it in hot dogs. But it's uh it, it, it's sad that it it. it it showed me how not to lose because yeah. there is going to be a time where I lose and lose again. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to shake the guy's hand and, and say, this guy's better than me. And, and, uh, either accept being second or, uh, or walk away. Yeah. And speaking of which, there was a time when you lost, um, you lost 2015, to a, right? Yeah. 2015 to Stony. Um, yeah. what, what happened there? Cause I, I, I had heard some rumors that you were going through some personal problems, something in your relationship, uh, was that true, and did that affect your eating that day? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. My, my I, had a, I had a wedding that was called off uh, in May. Uh, no like, way. Yeah, it was a it was a nightmare, dude. Uh, I, you, you don't want to call your mom and tell her, hey, we're not getting married. It, it, it's uh, and then you had to call. I had to call everybody. It was it was a nightmare. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. And it, and so. Yeah, you know, Matt ate better than me that year. He deserved a win. He, he and uh, uh, so he ate sixty-two, and I ate sixty. Uh, so I, 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 I lost. I, I, there could be I could give a ton of excuses, and but I, I yeah, I, it definitely it affected my training. And when you train bad, you're going to perform bad. And um, and I, I, I was I, next year. I, I, I tried to redeem myself and. Went back to the drawing board, and I, I came back and ate more than I ever had at Fourth of July in 2016. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it, it, it's it was actually, I'm not happy I lost in 2015, but it made me better, uh, and it made me, yeah, it, we we're all the the, the we we're, we're, we're the sum of all of, all of our past, and uh, it, made, it made me better. Where is she at today? Does she watch every year? And do you think she's jealous of your success going forward? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I it, it, it's uh it's a good thing it happened. She was a uh, it, it was one of those volatile relationships that are just like crazy. And um, <laughs> Dan's the king of those, and, uh, by the way. Yep. <laughs> it, it's, it, it, it's it's hot and cold, and it, it, but uh, it, it, it's a uh, it, it's a uh, no. She 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 was. I don't got anything bad to say about her, and and, and I'm I'm sure she's happy and. Uh, it just wasn't meant to be. Do you think anytime she goes to a barbecue like this Fourth of July, for example, and everybody's like, "Hey, do you want a hot dog?" She's like, "No, I've had enough. I'm good. Okay. I've had enough dogs. God yeah. damn it, no more." Yeah, she, she she used to get pretty angry, and, uh, <laughs> and then I, I bet it's ruined Fourth of July for her. <laughs> <laughs> are now, you are you married now? Do you have kids? No, no I'm not married. Uh, I got a girlfriend and a uh, couple dogs, and yeah, so it, it, I'm I'm pretty happy. I bet the dogs love it, man. When you're training, they can just like sit at the bottom of the table and wait for those scraps to hit the ground. Absolutely. Being a, being a dog a, in the chestnut household, that's the way to go. Yeah. And when I when I reincarnate, that's what I'm going for. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, well, the other, actually, like it was like two weeks ago. I uh, I was I made all the hot dogs. I put them out, put them out, prepped them, and then uh, I was I was filling up my water cups, and I went to the bathroom to get uh, get some more water, and then uh. I came back and like there was a plate of empty hot dogs and, and my dog was he he, he couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, you can't leave hot dogs out with a fucking I, was, dog around. What kind of dogs do you have? 
I have a German Shepherd and mm. and a Poodle mix. Ah, that's a, that's an odd combo. Um, I don't know. Those poodles are hypoallergenic. That's why a lot of people get them. Okay. So like, uh, uh, Poodle is my girlfriend's dog. Yeah, and uh, and the German Shepherd, he he protects. I, I I travel so much, and I can leave him alone for for a night or two by himself, and I have somebody mm. check on him. But uh, he he's he's wonderful taking care of the house. He's such a good guard dog. Yeah, I've got two Boston Terriers. They are not good guard dogs. Although I got uh, guns for both of them now. Yeah, so he yeah. taught the, the the dogs how to shoot. So well, they don't know how to shoot, but they have now. guns duct taped to their back whenever I'm gone. Yeah, just like as an intimidation measure. Of course, of course. Like if you see oh, yeah. a little tiny dog run up and he's got a fucking Glock on his back, like you don't know what the fuck happened just then. No, in. you have no idea. People leave, and you certainly don't want to rob the house anymore. No, actually, having a dog in the house uh, lessens the chance of break in by sixty five percent, no matter what kind of dog it is. Look at that. Even the poodle. Even the poodle. Yeah, any actually, the smaller the dog, the better because they yap more and ah, it's intimidating. You don't say. Yeah, it's like racking a shotgun in your house. After after you win, does the president call you? Who calls you after you win? No, no president has ever called me. What I, the fuck, Trump? I've, I've been, Come on. Just shit together. Bush, Obama, Trump. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, 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 what do I got to do? What do I got to um, do to get a fucking call from the president? Yeah. How many hot dogs do his does he need to eat? Uh, we should do a hashtag call Joey Chestnut after he wins. We that will. We'll, we'll start a petition on change.org. Well, we'll just have our listeners go to Trump checks his social media all the time. Tell him to call <laughs> Joey Chestnut after he we wins. We could start a Twitter fucking uh, thing. Yeah, for That'd sure. Be great. Yeah, uh, just go, I, to, go to Trump's uh, Instagram and put yeah. a hashtag call Joey Chestnut after he wins on Saturday because you are going to win this Saturday. For sure. And I believe you are going to break the record. I really believe that. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard one. Uh, that, that's a tough record to beat, and uh, mm. I just gotta I just gotta find a, a vicious mean rhythm. It, it's not gonna it's not gonna be pretty, uh, no. but that's life. Yeah, it never is. I, I want to, uh, to start it another petition as well, and mm -hmm. that's to get a Rocky style statue built on Coney Island of, of Joey, Joey Chestnut. Chestnut. Yeah, That'd be why, great. Like who? Why the fuck would that not already exist? I don't know. We're tearing down statues in every city right now. Let's, let's build let's a couple. Place them with yeah, with build, Joey Chestnut. Get rid of these Confederate assholes who lost their war and fucking put a winner up there. Yeah. For fuck's sake. This guy's a world record holder. Come on. July. Yeah. We need. We need to just be proud. Be happy. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think eventually <laughs> one day after he retires, there really will be a statue at Coney Island of Joey. There Chestnut. fucking better be, and in uh, Kentucky as well. Yeah, your home state. That's where you were born. You were born in Kentucky, right? No, dude. So I've, I've been to Kentucky, like, I did like four or five contests there, and I have a pretty good fan base, and I go and party there quite a bit. And uh, every time I, I – they, they change my Wikipedia page. Every time it gets changed back oh, to that's California. that's funny. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, no so you're actually – They'll find a way. These guys, they'll, they'll, they'll change it back to Kentucky. Like, like I'm honorary Kentucky now. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> But then there's other people from California who are like, oh, he's, he's, he grew up in Vallejo and he's, he lives in San Jose. Oh, you live <laughs> in they, San Jose, they, huh? They, yeah. How's that going? What's that? <laughs> I said, how's that going? <laughs> uh, I mean, I lived in Oakland for seven or eight years. It's different than yeah, San Jose, but not entirely. Like East San Jose is kind of like Oakland, I guess. Yeah, San Jose, San Jose is weird. It's just a, it's a, it's a nice suburb. We have awesome weather mm. and uh, – it, it is what it is. It, a lot of tech industry. Yeah, it's it's not bad at all. I, I can understand, though, Kentucky wanting to claim you as their chosen son. Um, they don't have a lot of heroes there in Kentucky. No. Uh, the, the, Mitch McConnell. They bourbon, though. The colonel. It yeah. It good. They got the you colonel. You don't need a lot when you have the yeah, Exactly. Colonel Sanders was not a real colonel, by the way. Well, he was, yeah, yeah, he well, was. No. No, he served. No, he did not. I think he's Colonel was a like a an honorific given to people who owned like large plantations and shit like that. Ah, uh, well, uh, yeah. I don't know if if he owned slaves, we would. Know I, about I don't think it he now. owned slaves, no. Okay, but like a pla like he owned a large farm of some sort. Plantation, yeah, so, where he, where he raised the chickens. Well, I don't think he raised the specific chickens. I, I think he probably did, and that's how he got started. We've all got to start somewhere. Uh, I think it started with the bow tie and mustache. To be honest, could be. Could be. You ever sat down and talked to some of the greats like Michael Jordan or any of those guys and compared notes on like how you pre you prepare? No, usually not. Not like like if I'm I met Jack, Shaq, uh, Charles Barkley a couple of times. Uh, who else? A couple of baseball players. But usually it's it's a uh, you just talk about normal normal stuff when when you meet these guys. And uh, you, every, what's funny is like 
everybody really is we're, we're the same we, we like the same stuff we like to laugh we like to we like to enjoy food and uh it, it, it's uh it, it yeah, you, you get competition mode is different though. If I if I met somebody in competition mode, like it, it, my competitors, I, I'm nice around them right now. But at the day of the contest, I'm I'm their enemy. So I'm, I'm I'm pushing them to their breaking point. So They're you're pushing me to. You're saying yeah, I'm you're, not, not. You're saying not that nice. you're uh, you're challenging Shaq to a hot dog eating contest. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, I was on Shaq versus. Ah, oh, no way! Did you? I assume yeah. you won, right? Oh yeah, I dominated. <laughs> <laughs> how many did you eat, and how many did he eat? I think I did fifty-two or fifty-five, and he had a team of him plus three other people, and they they, they got. I think they were like forty something. <laughs> wow, you're Shaq, talking to the best in the business. Shaq here. is what seven one, and seven, he weighs two eighty yeah. to three twenty, give or take, depending yeah. on what level of shape he's in. It's probably three thirty. Right yeah, now. He, he has some serious fluctuation. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a big dude. Uh, wow. Yeah, so so Saturday. Um, are you in a hotel right now in New York? Is that where you're at? Yeah, already already in New York. They uh, they just instituted the quarantine, so people coming coming from California now would have to quarantine for two weeks mm. uh, in New York. So I I, I I came in early because that that's what everybody said. Hey, you gotta come in early just in case they quarantine. And uh, so I'm just I'm skipped a cal- skipped my last practice because uh, in California, so I came out early. And now I'm just I'm getting ready. I'm starting to prep. Uh, I'll, I'll be start stopping eating on on Thursday, and uh, Friday or Saturday I'll be empty and loose. I'll be ready ready to just tear it up. Well, yeah, between now that. and then, like, what, when did you get to New York, and and then how have you been training since you got there? Are you just ordering hot dogs from some local place? Oh yeah, so I, I had I had some hot dogs yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. I did like I just did a quick twenty hot dog practice. <laughs> make sure they make sure everything was feeling right, all the muscles in my throat and and, and jaws, but uh. Uh yeah, so I'll stop eating hot dogs. Uh, I might have I might have a couple more tonight, but but it, but then I'll, I'll it's uh yeah my my last main practice was was supposed to be on Saturday in San Jose, but uh I I decided to come out early and uh it, a good thing I did because they they have the quarantine now um and so so it, I'll I'll try to eat normal tomorrow and then uh then I'll start my fast and it's. And my cleanse, it's pretty much a cleanse, like almost like the Hollywood diet where it's lemon juice and water. Mm. And uh, I make sure that there's absolutely nothing inside my body before before the contest. Make sure it's a clean highway. Yeah, empty and loose. That's uh, that's how Dan likes them. I do, yeah. He likes his women empty and loose. And, well, yeah, I guess empty and then I fill them up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, walk us through game day. So Saturday, what time do you get up? Uh, I know the contest is usually about 12.20, 12.30. What time do you get up, and what's your routine that morning, Saturday morning? Yeah, usually I uh, I have weird rituals. I think everybody does, but I, I try to get up pretty early, uh, either 5.30 or 6 in the morning, and I'll go for a walk. And just because I, I, and most of the time you, you uh, digest food when you're sleeping, mm-hmm. and that's when your stomach's naturally at its smallest. So I, I, I like to be up for a good amount of time before I – do any massive eating I'll, I'll drink first thing i'll do in the morning is i'll drink a gallon of water and then then i'll, I'll have a little bit of coffee and it, it's pretty much it's a liquid diet but i want to keep those muscles in my stomach used to stretching really quick and I, when i drink the gallon of water in, in the early in the morning it uh i'm doing it in it usually under under 15 seconds oh and, and I'm, I'm sorry i'm just stretching those muscles you're drinking a gallon of water in 15 seconds yeah it, okay. it's so so it, so it, it's really just it, i'm just you know, keeping everything stretched and loose i'm mm. trying to you know, not taking any calories mm. or anything real substance the water will run through me really yeah. quick and then uh, and then I go for a walk stretch keep stretching i actually i do yoga the morning of the contest mm. um get to do my child's pose and mm. that would dog there's but, a uh, there's a type of yoga called sunning where you face your butthole towards the the sun? Do you do that at all? Yeah, you sun your perineum. I have done it. Let's it's, get. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It, it's, <laughs> I, I, get, I get some bad sunburns. I think my, my, I have a white white ass. <laughs> you can almost see what's what's going on. Can you imagine being you on said the? It's butthole. almost translucent. Can you imagine being on the DL because your butthole sunburn? Like you call you call Nathan's morning up. Like, look, I was up late last night. It was sunny outside. My butthole's fucked. It right? happened. It's Can't happened it. before. It happened to uh, Josh Brolin. 
of you, but yeah, yeah, you can't. That take would a shit. be a bad idea. Yeah, that would be you terrible. can't take a shit because if that damn. happened to you, because all right, so contest ends, they put the mustard belt on you. How fast are you? Are you on a toilet after that? Oh, no. Usually, I'm not you not on the toilet until geez, usually four hours later at least. It, it, it takes a little while for things to start moving. So right after the contest, I'm doing interviews for about an hour. Uh, it might be a little bit less this year, and then I'm then I'm hanging out with people who are who are close by on stage or whatever, whatnot. And then I'm just thirsty and tired. So, I, and, and so I drink water, fall asleep on the bus ride back to New York, fall asleep in the hotel, wake up, either drink water and then, or roll over, get more comfortable. And then, then about four or five hours after the contest, that's when things like, I'll, I'll, I'll go, Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll be hustling to the bathroom. There's going to be some, uh, runs. <laughs> what's your uh, what's your psych up music? What are you listening to before, like all the single ladies by Beyonce or what is it? It's yeah, what do you st- come out to? What's your what's your closer song? What do you, oh, what do you come God. into? It used to be Bob, my my intro song used to be Bob O'Reilly, Teenage Wasteland. Mm. Oh, big fan. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a great intro song. In practice, uh, it, it, it's usually some hard hard rock, uh, either Marilyn Manson or, or Rob Zombie. Nice. Uh, you definitely grew up in the '90s. Yeah. It just it, well, it's, it, I'm I'm getting ready to to go through some pain. Yeah. And I'm ready to ready to just all right. It's gonna hurt, but I have to like it. And uh, whatever, what, yeah, whatever comes, I just just accept it and uh, push it. Man, I, I can't. I cannot wait for Saturday. I, Dan, I'll, yeah. They, I'll, they always say you shouldn't meet your heroes. They're incorrect today. I have mm-hmm. met my hero. This is pretty much as high as I can go in my life. Joey Chestnut, you are the guy that I hoped you would be, um, and I want to see you break that fucking record on Saturday. We are a Chestnut household, and God damn it, I'm giving you everything I got Saturday. I can promise you that. Oh, thank you. I, I, I'm, I'm so happy that we did this interview. I, I'm, I'm amped. Same, man. Uh, God, uh, sports are back, dude. Sports this is, are back this on is, Saturday. Yeah, this is important for everybody. It is. It is, because we need to heal as a nation. Yeah. Right, right now, we have no distractions right now. Yeah. None. Um, I'm tongue tied as I'm saying it because I'm a, I'm fired up for Saturday. Is there any uh, like <laughs> are there any PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, for this that you can take? Do they test you for anything, or how does that work? I've been tested. Uh, certain sponsors will test me. Uh, it just is, uh, like for what though? What are they it, testing but, for? But just, they just want to see, make sure I'm not I'm not, not a crackhead. Uh, <laughs> but like when I was doing work, it, yeah. But uh, that's actually not a bad yeah. idea. Crackhead hot dog eating contest. And, like they're yeah, all jacked up on crack. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I haven't found any real drugs that would help, and, no. and Lord knows that uh, I've, I've kept my eyes open. <laughs> I, maybe maybe weed to stimulate your appetite, but then you would lose focus, probably, right? Like yeah. you, you wouldn't you be lose, able to you lose your intensity. Yeah, you lose sense of your time. Yeah, uh, I, I I think caffeine is it, it really helps. Uh, it, it helps. I get amped up. I, sometimes I, I'll take a, a pre workout uh, mm. right beforehand. Uh, just so I can just push through it yeah, anything and, and just just focus on that. But I, I've it, you, you, anything you take beforehand. I'm so I'm so empty. It, it, it's it's like magnified mm. uh, the day of the contest or like by the time I'm actually eating. So I, I just want to just want to kind of just do what I do. Be happy and eat. Be a fat bastard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. God damn it! Again, I didn't get to meet Muhammad Ali. Um, I you know. I, I saw him I once, got but to he meet was the greatest today. He was already loose by then. Oh yeah, he was. And I didn't meet him, but I saw him somewhere, and it was just like there's no point in talking to. Him. I, I felt bad, like I can't talk to this guy right now. He's not going to know what the fuck's going on. No, no. Um, and I'm, but we're meeting somebody in their prime right now, who's the mm-hmm. very best in the entire world, and that is extremely r- rare. Joey Chestnut, thank you for being on Drinking Bros podcast today, sir. You are a hero, oh, and you're you. the greatest living athlete we have of this or any generation, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye, Joe. See you, man. Chestnut, dude. What a guy. Mm-hmm. What a guy. He's uh Best in the biz. Champion. Best in the biz. You ever been that close to greatness? Um, I mean, I wake up great every single day. Sure, but not Joey Chestnut great, Dan. I guess it depends on how you measure greatness. Uh, I don't know. By world championships, he's got 12. I've never competed one for one, but I don't think there's anything I could compete for. For You've never competed would, for any form of championship in your life. Uh, I've competed uh, for my life. Okay. Like in gunfights. Sure, but sure, that's sure. about it. And that yeah. doesn't really count because 
millions of people have done that. Right. And you don't get a belt. You don't get a mustard belt or anything. Uh, no, you don't. You get a CIB, Combat Infantry Badge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which is better than a goddamn well, mustard belt. Well, is, it, is yeah. it, Dan? It a, is. A lot of people would beg to differ. I, I feel like if you walk into a bar with war stories versus stories of eating hot dogs, maybe the war stories win. I don't know, dude. I guess I it depends know. on the girl. <laughs> It does, man. <laughs> um, no lie. I like it, the hilarious part of me is like, I watch that fucking dude like every year with my family. It's our weird. Every family's got like some weird family tradition. Yeah. Mine is watching Joey Chestnut um, and the 4th of July. <clears throat> Mine is none of us contest. talking to each other <laughs> for 25 years. It's weird. <laughs> but hey, you know, traditions are important. <laughs> <laughs> They're important to keep. Um. <laughs> Um, we got some sponsors who pay for this fucking shit wagon to be on the air first and foremost uh killcliffcbd.com uh man uh i've i've i'm out i'm out of this not me i've got two cases god damn it man i'm out of it because we're getting ready to move to austin texas so um i didn't order any more to my house in case it was like a you know a late delivery, and mm-hmm. I was like, man, I don't want the fucking next people to to have these these goddamn things. I want them for myself. Uh, but right now, you can get them for yourself and get twenty percent off at KillCliffCBD.com um, with the promo code Drinking Bros. That'll get you twenty percent off a case, and they get free shipping, which is super important in that. Uh, go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Three amazing flavors: grape, orange Kush, and uh, mango. I still go with the greatest of all time. KillCliffCBD.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off. Next up, we've got MyBookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will get you 150, 150% of your deposit back is what yep. it will, will get you. And if you're uh, going to be watching the hot dog eating competition with yes. us this weekend, just know that we've already bet on the over of 71.5. Correct. And it's I a- bet on the record. Yep. And uh, we'll be texting Joey some weird shit if he wins. Absolutely. And um, it's it's one of those things where the max bet there is $100 on this. And you know I went all in. So I mm-hmm. maxed out on both of those bets on Chestnut. I think he's going to do it because he's isolated in a room and uh, he's going to be in AC. It's going to be peak conditions. And I'm sure people are yeah. going to bitch over it. Typically, oh, he may get an asterisk next correct. to the thing. But Joey's the kind of guy. Like he never he, – he's like uh, – those fighters you see when they get hit the first time, that's when they actually start fighting. Yeah. Like he kind of cruised his way. He, he beat Kobayashi for sure, but he kind of stayed in that same general range until homeboy, Matt, whatever the fuck his name was. Yeah. Uh, beat him. Uh, what was his Matt name? Stoney. Stoney. Yeah. Matt Stoney in 2015. Yeah. And then he started to crank it up. That's when he started yeah. going like 60, 65, 70, and then 71 and 74. Yeah. So we'll see if he, if he, if they try to talk shit to him this year, after this one, I feel like he might come back next year and just eat everybody's, including the other contestants' hot dogs. Yeah, I mean, look, I, it reminds me when Bonds and uh, McGuire were going for 70, you know? Um, Sosa? Yeah, all those guys. Um, because, you know, I think Bonds topped out at, what, 74? 73. So 73. Yep. So Chestnut's at 74 and a half. So he already owns, you know, he's, he's one and a half over, over Bonds. And again, I would put that as equal playing field of, of home runs. And, and um, eating hot dogs? There have been... How many other people have ever eaten 70? None. Right? So, yeah. What's the next highest So for, ba- for baseball, there has been. Like, McGuire hit 70. Yeah. And then you've got Bonds, so there's two. Chestnut is in a, in a league of his own there, and you can bet on it at mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. Again, we'll get you 150% of your deposit back. So that means put 100 in, you get 150 back to bet with, which is fucking awesome. And uh, you can bet on everything now. Uh, I'm not sure, Dan, if, uh, if sports are going to go on here. Um, Denver Nuggets is breaking news. Just shut down their facility. Yeah, so. and the, the Nets, not that they had any uh, chance of winning anything anyways, but Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. DeAndre uh, Jordan just DeAndre got, Jordan got the Rona. And hand. Wilson Chandler are all out already. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dinwiddie or whatever his name is, yes. who is – Fucking great, by the way. It's great. Like his PER this year, I think was like is like twenty five mm-hmm. so far. He's averaging twenty points and seven assists a game. Breakout year, and that team next year, by the way, is going to be fucking nasty. Yeah, if they it's all come back be, healthy, yeah, yeah, it's going to be Kyrie Irving, uh, Dinwiddie, 
and uh, Durant. Kevin Durant and fucking Wilson Chandler is on that team and fucking uh, DeAndre, DeAndre Jordan. Jordan. I mean, that's a tough lineup right I there. I know. I know. So we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, I, there's no way this season takes off. I don't think it happens. No. I don't, basketball. Baseball, I think, will probably happen. I don't think that basketball will. And here's the problem. They, they have this eight-game playoff. Like, everybody's questioned what, what do we do if – Eight-game or eight-round playoff? Eight-game – it's like eight games to finish the season or whatever. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Which right, right. is essentially a playoff for those teams Correct. that are borderline. Yeah, so yeah. what happens if, like they've already scheduled this shit, right? Mm-hmm. What happens if one of those entire, like if somebody's supposed to play the Nets, the Nets aren't there. Like they may not even be able to field a full team. No. Um, and, you know, you'd look at, and we, I, we brought this up on the sports show a couple of days ago. What happens if your best player goes down? So for Denver Nuggets, the Joker's down. He's got the Rona. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you do if if LeBron goes down? Is that even <clears throat> worth playing anymore? Just to say you you know you won a title against the well, I guess it depends D-League. on how long he's down. I mean, you I feel like if you get coronavirus, you have to the protocol right now is you have to quarantine for fourteen days. Right, fourteen yeah. days is two full series. Yeah. So if you're in the first round, yeah. maybe you can keep playing and see what happens. If you're a team with the talent that the Lakers have, maybe you can make it to the third round. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that before, like. Uh, the year that uh, that uh, Golden State won seventy three games, I'm pretty sure Curry missed. Like he played the first game of the first round and then missed the rest of that and missed the entire second round and then came back in the third round against yeah. uh, Oklahoma City, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's happened before with a great player, but most of those like the Lakers have a great team, but they don't have Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, and Clay Thompson to back up that guy that's out. Right. You know what I mean? That's just not a thing. So who knows what the fuck's going to happen now? Yeah. The other part of this is uh, you take the baseball players. Um, yeah. Some are opting just to sit out, and so are the coaches. Yeah. So Ryan Zimmerman is the biggest name so far for the Nationals, and he was like, hey, man, my health is too important. I'm not coming back for this. Yeah. Then there's there's a lot of coaches who are in their late 60s. I wouldn't. If I was in my late 60s, I definitely wouldn't do they're it. They're not coming back. So like, they, but they've you already said they're not, I'm not going to go and coach this yeah. year. I mean, I feel like if you're a coach or a manager, you could do that shit remotely. You don't need to be there to do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure there's some feel to the game, but I feel like. One of them is a bullpen coach. So, mm. you know, it's tough. Um, and I, I get, again, I hate to be a fucking naysayer or a doomsdayer on this one, but I just don't see how any of this stuff is coming back. Uh, luckily, we're going to get this uh, hot dog eating contest on Saturday. That's going to have to tie it over your bellies for a while, I have a feeling. Uh, and that's just my guess. Um, last sponsor is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros 25 percent off everything in the entire store at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros that sheets pillows adjustable bases mattresses you name it <laughs> um also if you get a mattress right now you get two free pillows and i promise you the pillows are just as great as the goddamn mattress covid free and i'm gonna be honest if if you were in a hot dog eating contest and you were lying on your side on there i think you might you're, you're so comfortable you just let it all go in the bed yeah Maybe you got to get that protector. Yeah, definitely sure. get that protector on there. Yeah, that that, that as well is is uh, is twenty five percent off. And as always, they got a thirty six month pay as you go no interest program at ghostbed dot com forward slash drinking bros. So uh, go there today, get your mattress and uh, bundle it all that shit together. Walk out of there with like twenty eight bucks a month, dude, for thirty six months. Great, no interest for thirty six months. It's fucking crazy. Um, Dan, I know this wasn't going to be a sports show, but uh, necessarily because Joey Chestnut's one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah, he transcends sports. Yeah, that's. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, you know sports stories going on that we should report. Uh, the state of Arizona has closed down, including all sports facilities. Uh, that is, that includes college. Now, college <coughs> has still maintained that they are coming back. Um, so is the NFL. Arizona Cardinals are there for the NFL. Why the hesitation anymore, I guess, at this point? Are they hoping this map magically goes away in 30 days? Because Arizona imposed a 30-day uh, fucking shutdown. So you're not coming back until August 1st at the very beginning. Yeah. Look, football season starts the end of August. College yeah. does. And then pros start, you know, second week Well, of I, I guess I, I thought that the point of the shutdown wasn't necessarily to prevent the spread of COVID itself, but to make sure we don't overwhelm the hospital systems, right? Mm -hmm. Um, If that's the case, these people have private health care. Right. Like, these are rich people. Yeah. So what are we talking about, really? Like, if you're a young athlete, I feel like this is all ridiculous. 
I agree with that the coach if you're if you're 55 or older you should probably stay away mm -hmm. to be honest um, but if you're uh, an athlete in your 20s and 30s there's no reason not to just keep playing so I wanted to ask you something that I didn't ask you the other day let's say you're Ezekiel Elliott right mm -hmm. he came <laughs> out of this and he said this he said the same thing I did look this lasts for about three days mm -hmm. um, you know it's kind of like a mild cold and mm -hmm. uh, and then you're over it uh, that that's for the 30 to 30 or 30 to 50 percent of people who experience symptoms mm -hmm. not the 30 to 40 percent who experience no symptoms Correct. at all that, that right. were asymptomatic yeah entirely so and because uh, with that like i was with four people three of them had the same we all had the same shit right uh one of them did not and it was like well do i have it or do i not have it and it was like I, I would assume some of these people are going to be asymptomatic. In the case of LSU and Clemson, mm. there is kids that are testing positive that are asymptomatic of it. Yep. But they're, they're having positive tests here. Um, is it one of those things that you can say, hey, man, I'm healthy enough. We're all going to get it. Can't you just sit out the three days and then come back after that? What's with the 14-day wait if everybody <clears throat> around you is going, you're, you're going to get it? The 14-day thing is, uh, I don't know why 14 days from the time they test you. It should be 14 days from the time they verify that you contracted it, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's where the virus shedding happens. That's my understanding anyways. Uh, that would make a lot more sense to me than just a blanket 14 days. But look, you can't... Um, when you're dealing in mass like that, you really can't legislate to the individual because it's just too much work to do it that way. So it's just like, all right, forget it. It's 14 day quarantine. That's what we know for sure is safe for everybody. But it's probably, I think the virus actually runs runs its course faster than that, and the shedding part of it is a little bit quicker as well. Plus, you have to account for the first three to four days where you're asymptomatic in everybody's case. Like nobody gets sick on day one. Right. So I, I just don't. I don't know why they came to that decision, but I'm sure there's some reason behind it. Uh, Dr. Fauci, this is breaking news uh, right now, has just testified uh, to a Senate committee Tuesday uh, that he would not be surprised if the U.S. begins reporting as many as 100,000 new coronavirus cases per day. That is per day. He said, I'm very concerned and not satisfied with what's going on because we're going in the wrong direction. Uh, what's the big picture here? What if everybody gets this fucking thing? If you've got 100,000 a day, I mean... Uh, you're looking at half the country at that point after, uh, after I mean, that's, a month. That would take 10 years to affect everybody in the country. So it would take five years for okay. half the country. Okay. But, uh, you know, whatever. I'm not, look, I'm never good at math. I'm not, not claiming to be a mathematician, Dan. This is, this is the shit that, um, that, that CNN posts, though. This is like some of their headlines today. He was an athlete in the best shape of his life. Then COVID-19 nearly killed him. Mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to, even though the the not even preponderance, but all of the evidence suggests that healthy people that are fucking under 55 have almost no chance of dying from this. Right. Like literally no chance, yeah. like point zero 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 three or 4 percent chance of dying or some stupid shit like that. Um, they find one example of a guy who was an athlete. He's actually old as shit. He's 40, uh, for an athlete, obviously not for a human being, but, uh, like, Come on, man. That, that's like saying I have a black friend when somebody calls you racist. Right. Like, I'm going to find this one fucking person who doesn't fit the data but does fit my narrative. CNN are a bunch of cunts. We all know that. Yeah. Like, that's nothing new. So one of their other articles today is, uh, I mentioned this the other day, <clears throat> and it's a video. What if Trump loses and refuses to leave? Yeah, yeah. This is the third <laughs> time they've run the same story. This time yeah. it's video instead of text. Well, that means there's getting a lot of clicks. Yeah. So now they want those video views for that advertising dollar for the 30 second ads. But uh, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard of all the time. You know, the other one I kept reading last night was um, Trump's whispering to all of his. Uh, that he's going to quit. Yeah, he's going to yeah, quit. Get the Not fuck one out of here, too. Prayer on Are you this kidding earth. me? <laughs> and they were like, no, GOP insiders were all saying it. He's thinking about quitting. <laughs> and it's like. Do you think Trump talks to GOP insiders? No. Like he has insulated himself from the establishment on purpose. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty much fuck. him and his family now at this point, right? Yeah, I guess. Because uh, I heard Eric Trump's running all the businesses. Mm. Um, and then Ivanka and Jared Kushner are doing you know, the rest of the shit. I wouldn't trust anybody in there. Mm -mm. I wouldn't trust my own family if I was Trump because they all look like squishy faces to me. Well, stop it. Ivanka is, is real goddamn hot. Every time I hear her talk, it's like, um, it, to me, it just reminds me of the simple life. Mm, maybe. 
I, look. Like, I've never done shit in my life except for get paid to be alive. Yeah. And that's the kind of fucking... I, I don't need somebody like that telling me She's what to do. Attractive. Sorry. She mm. is attractive. There's plenty of attractive people out there that, that aren't like that. That's, that's my speed, man. I'm all, si- I'm all set on that. <laughs> you Thank know what's weird? Much. was back in the day in Hollywood. Mm. Um, she used to run around with like the Kardashians and shit. Of the course clubs. she did. It was her, Paris Hilton, and uh, Kim. Mm-hmm. And they would run around together. And the weird thing was. Well, Kim was like an assistant she, to yeah, Paris she Hilton. Yeah, right? she wasn't famous. Paris was the one who was super famous. Um, and now you look at it. If you would have picked out which dad would have been president back then and said. Well, it wasn't going to be Robert Kardashian. <laughs> well, who knows? After that OJ trial. No. That's as famous as one could possibly have got, gotten in the well, world. Well, he was dead, though. Well, he didn't die immediately after the trial. No, but he, like, before she was out there partying, probably. Yeah. What was it, 99 or 2000 that he died? You know what's weird? If he doesn't do that case, we don't know anything about the Kardashians, and her sex tape is meaningless. Um, For real. Yeah. It's just another fucking hot girl who's, you know, in her early 20s with a sex tape. Nobody gives a shit about that. No. Um, It's so crazy how that happened. That oh my god! Thing. Texas Realtor Group says it will no longer use the word "quote unquote" master to describe bedrooms in its listings. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to call the master? I bedroom? don't know. The biggin. <laughs> Come on down to the biggin, man. Hell yeah! It's got a bathroom attached to it. This is where you can fuck your wife, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude! The biggin. <laughs> So fucking stupid. I don't know if you're a fan of Futurama, but there's a scene where everybody. My one of my best, fr- uh, well, it used to be best friend, uh, plays Bender. Mm. Um, John DiMaggio. Yeah, that guy's a tool. Uh, you fuck it, no. I, well, do you know? No, but I know about him. Oh, you do? Like I've heard some of his public comments. He's a tool. Oh, I, I've never heard him speak super, publicly. Super, super liberal dude. He's really funny in real life, but uh, well, I'm sure he's funny. He yeah. picked up all of his shit and moved to Palm Springs. Uh, well, that's he's probably gay then, because no, he's married. It's I only gay it. men that live in Palm Springs. No, no, no. He's I, like I met his old, wife. old, rich white dudes and gay men. He's definitely straight. Palm yeah, Springs. I met his the, wife. I, I've had some amazing experiences with the gay people of Palm Springs. Like I would go into a restaurant. I, I used to go vacation there all the time. I go into a restaurant and order something. They're like, oh no, you're not ordering that. I'm like, all right, dude, just tell me what to get. I yeah, don't, I don't want to get in a fight with a gay dude about food right now. Just tell me what to order and I'll order it. Every bachelor party we went to was in uh, Palm Springs. You get the best service there. It's like, great. No I, shit. It's like a, they're it's professional wait staff. They're, I just they're legit. Live there. No, it's fucking hot as shit, man. Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. And that one little airport that's up on top of the hill. Like I'm not doing that. No way. I'll, I feel like I'd fall off the hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, look, everything's changing, man. All, all this shit. Uh, the master bedroom. The fucking. <laughs> you name it. Every single day, there's something new. I love it, man. This is so funny going. to me because this is. Um, it, it's like. Everything is coming to fruition now. All the stuff that we've been warned about over time yeah. is all happening right now, yeah. and um, there's, no, there's no stopping it now. No, and who is the latest one? Kristen Bell, who's uh, – was she in Big Mouth? No, that was uh, the girl with Oh, the, that was uh, from SNL. Nose. Yeah, Jenny Slate. Slate, yeah. yeah. So uh, Kristen Bell was in another cartoon series with both of them. Uh, I guess Jenny Slate played a black – girl's voiceover in that mm-hmm. in that uh, show she's not doing it anymore she thinks oh the guy who did the voice for cleveland brown on family guy quit too he quit too yep. yeah um and uh so Kristen bell came out now she's playing a mixed character so it's both a white and a black girl and uh she's quitting because she said this should be played by somebody mixed and i was should like, it you're, you know, which you get, you you almost got to pick a race on that. One. I mean, it's, it's a cartoon. By a, yeah, yes. Cart- somebody else wrote underneath it. They were like, all cartoons should be played by cartoons only. Which is <laughs> where we're at now. I feel like if you uh, like horses, the same thing for horses. Yeah. Like if you're trying to make an anthropomorphic uh, horse or something like that, or or a horse that like Mr. Ed, for example, mm-hmm. that that wasn't really a horse talking. You know that, right? Right. They just put peanut butter on the roof of his mouth to make his mouth move. Yeah, and then the same thing they over the same thing they did with uh, with uh, Ronald Reagan towards the end of his presidency. Yeah, well, same thing they're doing with Biden every single day. Oh yeah, he's he's uh, uh, a frittata at this point. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't he's, it? He's he's gone. He's uh, a <laughs> he's, he's just he's like, not coming back. I don't I don't know what's happening here, but I don't like it. No, and um, forty years of racist legislation has resulted in this mess that I'm coming to clean up. Uh-huh. Like, well, you wrote the bill, dude. Yeah, there's two main factors when it comes to crime. One, father being gone out of the household. Two, poverty. Right? Yep. Those are the two number ones. 
Biden, you wrote that bill. Put all the black <laughs> dudes in jail, brother. So, uh, yeah, the Democratic Party is full of shit. Uh, They're running on this reform bullshit. Yeah. And you are, the, you are literally the people that caused the problem. It's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's, it's some kind of weird strategy, marketing strategy. I don't know what it is, but. I don't, I don't either. And uh, Jesse pointed out today, she was like, you notice who's giving all of the speeches right now is Jill, Jill Biden. Well, she's the smart one. She always has been. I understand. She's that, a doctor. When are we like? When is Homeboy going to come out? Are they just going to keep him hidden in the closet? Because um, I've, I've seen some. Look, a lot of these polls that you're reading out there from CNN of of Trump is down by 14 and all that shit. Mm-hmm. For, from what I heard, insider wise, uh, none of those polls are obviously true. No, of course. I not. heard the lead is really about two points. To be honest with you, yeah, but the, and it can go either way. The polls are nonsense, anyways. Nonsense. Nonsense, dude. Like, we learned that last time. Yeah. Nobody believes that shit. That's what it feels like. This feels like 2016 all over again. Uh, but we'll see. Um, they're certainly trying to slant things uh, to get him out of there. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to open up um, where the Hawks play in Atlanta to get as a voting station. Yeah, that's not the worst idea I've ever heard. It's not the greatest either, man. And <clears throat> um, because it. You got to do something. If you're if you're the Republican Party and you're going to be super anti mail in vote, then you have to come up with a better option because having one place that's run correctly is way better than having to try to manage 400 different polling locations. Yeah, in my opinion. But then you've got here's the thing: you run the risk of if you're opening up gigantic polling stations like that in one particular area, you'd, you're going to have to do it everywhere, which is the problem. Where it's just like, all right, cool, man. Um, what about the rural towns? Like the farmers and all yeah. that other shit. They don't have a giant place where they can go vote. No, I mean, it's they, they usually use schools and churches and shit like that, which I think is fucked up. Yeah. Why do you think that's fucked up, by the way? You're uh, right. Um, well, schools are fine. But a church, like, why would you involve a tax-exempt religious organization in a place or in, voting in a country where religion versus irreligion have been established? Like, you can't... For, there's there's obviously the establishment clause, and people go back and forth on what that means and if it's right or not or whatever. The, what, what was real meaning? Their meaning was very fucking obvious, actually. Just like the, the uh, Second Amendment is really obvious. But David Souter opined in 96 in a, in a case about um, in the Hasidic Jewish community that uh, not only can you not respect one religion over another if you're the government, you can't respect religion versus irreligion or the absence of religion Mm -hmm. you can't use a church to fucking vote give me a fucking break crazy right yeah but whatever who cares Um, voting is pointless guys i've said that for years yeah remember when i pissed off uh what was her name kaya jones oh yeah i made her so mad she's like what do you mean you don't you you think it's rigged is that what you don't vote i'm like "Uh, i guess kind of but it's just pointless in general she got so i've never (laughs) seen that might be the maddest anyone i wasn't dating has ever been at me (laughs) i'll never forget that dinner we went oh yeah it was great hilarious Uh, really really fucking funny (laughs) Um, oh man she did not give a fuck I'd actually like to have her back on the show. She she's a she's a fun guest. Yeah, I like. I mean, I like her as a person. I just like it's so easy to push her buttons. Oh yeah, that's dude. why I like hanging out with her because I'm just like I, I I say shit I don't believe half the time. Yeah, just to fucking get her mad. <laughs> <laughs> Which is you know good good on her for uh, like she gets mad and then she forgets that she was mad. She doesn't like hold a grudge or anything. So I'm like, all right, cool. I can keep doing this forever. <laughs> yeah, I liked her. She was funny. Yeah, uh, she. Was she I think she moved to New York and. Uh, uh, the dude she's dating is super fucking hot too. Oh, is it really? Let's, yeah. let's fuck him. He's a good looking dude. Let's yeah, I think I think uh, we'll need to at some point. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to plan a trip to New York and bang we'll check her, it out once they husband. get rid of this stupid fucking quarantine bullshit. Well, yeah, look, kids, it was uh, uh, it's it's weird times. Um, it was exciting to have Joey Chestnut on, the mm-hmm. greatest of all time, and I hope he can break the record. Uh, but I have a feeling that's that's one of the last sporting events we're going to see for for a while. Well, we're going to keep seeing fighting. As a matter of fact, Fight Island is about to open up. It is, yes. And uh, I talked to um, John and UFC yeah. yesterday. Oh um, yeah, what did he say? He said, "Well, he's just chilling, taking time off with his family for mm-hmm. the next week or so, and then he's going to to uh, Dubai for at least five a month. weeks, right? At least a month, yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, that's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. Um, good for Dana White, though. I, I tell you what, every Saturday night. Kids, kids go to bed. Yeah, I'll pop on UFC. It's always on every Saturday night, man. It's the only sport we have, mm-hmm. and I've become bigger of a fan. His mar- the the amount of uh, the market they've captured now, like when, when, if if you're a sport 
in America, your market share, like some people just don't watch team sports. They either watch, they like tennis or boxing or NASCAR or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe UFC. Uh, if you're, if you're talking about the main five sports and when I say the main five sports in America, I mean, obviously baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and, and fighting, whether right. it's boxing or MMA, right. um, you're always competing for market share. Like what, what is, what are people going to watch on Saturday night? Now, Saturday night is in the same way Sunday night is owned by the football. Saturday night is owned by fucking the UFC. It's it not is, yeah. like boxing is not even in competition for that Saturday night no. slot anymore. Yeah. So he's really done a good job of taking advantage of this whole situation. Not that he's being like taking advantage of it, but like doing the right things because people need sports. Yeah, and look, it's the same with our podcast. Like, yeah. we've been going every single day, six out of seven days a week, and everybody asks, hey, man, are you guys going to keep doing this? We love it. Yeah. It's the only concept I mean, we we're have. even trying yes, to get we – we're trying to get even more going. Speaking of yeah. the other podcasts we're trying to get going, uh, Bert Kuntz will love this one. A 72-year-old woman was gored by a bison at Yellowstone National Park when she tried to take a picture. Look, folks, <laughs> bison aren't your friends. They're big as shit. They will gore you. They will stomp your ass out. They'll fuck you up. Stay away from them. God damn it, man. Like, how many times do we have to see this shit? <laughs> when does Bert's show start? Because he's Bert's going to be on our network here. When is his show uh, start? I don't know. He's still getting set up. His studio is beautiful. It is really he's, nice, he's, yeah. He's the equipment and everything. Yeah. Because um, Hollywood's going to be shut down for a while. Tell Tyler Gray to get out there and start recording, man. Yeah. I mean, I, they thought they – I think there was a hiccup because they thought Hollywood was coming back. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jack is going to be on the show a lot too. And uh, Jack, he, Jack uh, Osborne. Osborne. Yeah, so he, he was thinking he was going to go back to shooting the ghost hunting show. But it doesn't look like that's going to be able to start back up either. So they're probably going no. to lean into the podcast, I guess. Yeah, I was. I said something earlier on, on Ross Patterson Revolution about the, the, the TV show that I sold. Um, it's fucking – on hold like yeah every single person is and it's you know it's something you don't think about of insurance um, because they're worried about getting sued if a crew member gets covid and yeah. then sues and we just saw a case of that yesterday actually with a, a couple of these sports teams where they started suing being like uh i was put in harm's way and i shouldn't mm -hmm. have been and blah, blah 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 that is all hollywood is worried about so if you're if you're out there and you're like when's my favorite show coming back it's not going to be for a while because yeah. they're worried about these lawsuits and for the purposes of insurance just signing a waiver saying I won't sue if I get COVID is meaningless. meaningless. That doesn't mean shit yep. when it comes to insurance. Yep. Like they, they're not suing you personally. They're suing your insurance at that point. Yeah. So there's no waiver that will fucking stop that from happening. And that's no. going to happen. Like I don't know what the insurance is that Major League Baseball teams have or if it's an umbrella where it's the Players Association has insurance that's under Major League Baseball and then the, under that is the team insurance or whatever the fuck. I don't know how it's uh, stacked up. Like it can get really complicated, but I know that – none of it will stop a major league baseball player from suing the insurance company. Oh yeah. Which will make their premiums go fucking crazy. Sky high. Yeah. So I don't know what the fuck I, I none of this is going to work. No, no, none of it's going to work. And, uh, in Hollywood, um, you have to list when you go in for the, for all of these productions, uh, what you expect to be sued for, what you could be sued yeah. for. Right. Um, usually it's workers comp and all that other shit and like, you know, getting hurt on the job and everything else. Then they start to go into, all right, well, what are you doing on this production? Mm -hmm. Are you skydiving? Are you getting in car chases? What's going to happen in this but movie a or TV show? A lot of it show? is like, are you shooting, like you know this, yep. shoot, are you shooting outdoors with lighting that will attract lightning and shit? There's like so much, didn't a guy get struck by lightning on one of your productions? Yes, he got electrocuted. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck, man? And luckily, so much fucked up sue. shit can happen. I know. L luckily, he didn't sue. And if you're a production company, especially like a mid-level to small level, not a major one, but a mid to small level production company and you get sued once, you're done. Yeah, most of them you are. Um, and, you know, the insurance kicks in after that. But the problem is uh, when you start a production, part of your budget, let's say you get $10 million for mm -hmm. a movie, right, to shoot a movie. And that's just a hypothetical number. Before you start production, they will say, all right, great. What is your budget? What are you guys shooting? What's the dangers of somebody getting hurt mm -hmm. or sick or ill? With COVID on there, your, your fucking budget to insure a movie now, is, that was probably... 1.5 if you're a 10 million dollar move mm -hmm. like because if eight to ten of those people say i've got covid and not either yeah, you gotta I die, shut the whole damn thing down yeah or, or or if one of them fucking dies yeah forget it dude like um and so a lot of these productions can't even afford that kind of insurance so i don't know what's going to happen i mean there was a movie that i did where they wouldn't insure i was flying in the back of uh, uh one of those fighter jets mm. and um f-15 or 16 yes, and they would not insure that scene so they said, look, if you die or something happens to you and your crew on that, I like I am personally responsible for that. Mm. Nothing happened to me. But uh, three movies later, 
uh, that guy crashed that F-15 and both of them died. So good luck trying to get insurance on COVID. And that's why a lot of your favorite shit isn't going to come back for a while, including like SEAL Team and these other things. Mm. So uh, we'll see what happens. Either way, dream come true today. Joey Chestnut was on the show. We're going to be watching on Saturday. Tune in with us at high noon Eastern Standard Time. And uh, bet with us or against us on mybookie.com. Over under is 71 and a half. And then uh, is the record? The record is on there. 74, right? I think so. Let me and check half, right yeah. quick. Um, uh, and then in the meantime, we launched drinkingbrostickets.com. Obviously, there is nothing to get tickets for right now. Uh, it doesn't affect us at all. Um, because we, we haven't started yet. Uh, but that site is live. So when everything does go live and you're finally able to buy tickets to all your favorite sporting events, you can go to drinkingbrostickets.com. And it's literally the exact same as StubHub, uh, except mm-hmm. you're saving about $10 uh, cheaper a ticket on it. Um, but And it'll also have a list, not only of the events that uh, me, Ross, Jared, and then the girls and whoever else, Dakota or Derek or anybody are doing, that's in our network, but also have the sporting events or, or concerts that we're actually going to be at. So right. you can fucking plan around that and come hang out with us. And, and we'll tell you where we're sitting. So we'll give you the sections yeah. and all that stuff and you can buy tickets around us. <laughs> um, we learned, you know, a while ago that, that it was just the back end search engine. They're all the same stuff. Yeah. Ticketmaster, all this shit. So I was like, great. Why couldn't we have one for our listeners and, mm-hmm. and all the shit that we and go it's a, to? It's a lot easier for us to coordinate hanging out with you guys. If we just tell you where you are and you show up. Absolutely. Than it is us like, cause usually what, it, what happens is, we're either in DMs or texting with thirty different fucking people. Yeah. Now it's just going to be like, here's where we are. Come hang out. Hey man, we're in you one, don't have to we're RSVP or something. Exactly. Just buy your tickets and just show come up. Come and we'll, we'll we'll get drinks and fucking rage. Yeah. Uh, so go to <laughs> that site is live now. You can test it out. Go to drinkingbrostickets.com today, and, you, and you'll have everything on there. Super Bowl, fucking Cowboys, uh, Notre mm-hmm. Dame, Ohio State, what, whatever team you could possibly think of. Masters. They don't have the game. record on here. Of. Uh, uh, oh, of hot dogs? They've got hot dogs eaten, 71 and a half. Yeah. Uh, will Joey Chestnut win? Will uh, Mickey, Mickey, Sudo, Mickey? Is yeah, that, it Mickey, uh, Mika, Mickey? Mika, 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 Mika Sudo. It's M-I-K-I yeah. uh, on the site. She, uh, She's the female champion. Yeah, she's won for like five years in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, will the men's contest go to overtime eat off? They have that one, but they don't have... Uh, the total that will never go and to the women's the women's winner by the way it's 37 and a half oh shit really i bet let me that. see what the record is for them right now i think it, i thought it was 50 but i could be wrong let's see i thought it was higher than that i don't know i thought it was 50 or maybe 48 that's what that's, i'm gonna go with 48 and a half let's see well what is it i don't know what the women's record is but pseudo the the most she's ever eaten is 41 oh, okay so, ah, that thirty-seven and a half. Yeah, her last year she. Uh, what did she have last year? Thirty-one. Yeesh. Year before that, thirty-seven. All right. Uh, maybe take that under then. Thirty-eight and a half. She's done thirty-eight. She's beaten thirty-seven and a half quite a few times. So I don't know. Oof, I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's tough a tough one. one. I'm going all uh, chess on this. Under one. these all conditions, my on chess oh yeah, for sure. I think now. 71 and a half. He's safe. I don't know if he'll do the record or not because he seems like he's psyching himself out a little he's bit. He's doing the record. I don't know. He was on the show. He's gonna win. He's gonna. He's gonna top it. Well, I hope so. We'll I'm, see. We'll see. I'm, he's got my thoughts and prayers for same. sure. Oh, same, dude. I'll uh, be up praying to Allah all night, all night long, all night long. Uh, D'Anthony, fun show, dream yeah. come true. Joey Chestnut, best in the biz. Uh, tune in to Drinking Bros Podcast live on YouTube at high noon on 4th of July and watch it with us. It's only an hour. Uh, girls are up first for a half hour and the guys are up next for a half hour. And we'll see if Joey Chestnut is able to win his 13th yellow mustard belt. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone.